those are uh, things I wish that someone had told me before I applied. You're just a person and this is a hard process. This is the part of Fresh Press Science where we give advice about graduate school. And I'm currently a fifth year PhD candidate at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. My name is Susanna. I'm Gabby. I'm currently a fourth year PhD student at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston, Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> How do you apply to grad schools? What does that even look like? How to not freak out. How to maintain your regular life while you're doing it? Because, you know, a lot of times the advice kind of fits in with a lifestyle of you're not doing anything else. For some reason, you have all the time in the world. No free time. I was writing my honors thesis at the same time as I was applying for graduate school. There's a lot of resources and we've linked our most favorites in the description. Um, but each of us are going to talk a little bit about our top three tips for applying. My three tips are, first of all, reach out to the graduate students that are there. If you have any questions about an apartment, if you want to know about funding, if you want to know what the climate is, send an email to someone in the lab that you're interested in or, or send an email even to the director of the graduate studies and say, could you recommend someone I talk to? Only apply to places that you want to go to. So often people choose backup schools and you ask them, you know, oh, well, what are you excited about there? And they'll say, well, if I don't get in anywhere else, I'll go there. And I can tell you right now, if you are not excited about the research, the place, the people, it is going to be a waste of time and money. Prioritize your own efforts. You only have so much time and you're better off making a list and, and deciding what are the top priorities? What do I really need to spend my time on? Otherwise, it's really easy to get bogged down in the little details. What about your three tips? My first one is to stay as organized as you can, um, especially if you're applying to a lot of schools or you're um, emailing a lot of people. It depends on your process. Start a spreadsheet or a journal, whatever works for you. It's really important to stay organized. A lot of applications and fellowships and all, basically anything you apply for, a lot of it's luck. Um, it's about who has funding already who has room for students, and it's not a reflection on you or your future success. Keep that in mind when you're going through any kind of application process. You are great, even if you are having trouble with the applications. Kind of related to that is that you should ask people to read your personal statements, even though it feels kind of awkward, because even though it is a lot of luck, it is good to put your best foot forward and to submit the best application materials you can. It can feel kind of awkward, at least it did for me. Um, but it's still really, really important to try to get feedback on. I totally resonate with the personal statement thing because it is, it's, it's really scary. First draft is always garbage. Um, it just, I have never had a first draft of a personal statement look like anything like what I eventually submit. Uh, a personal statement needs to be really tailored to whatever you're applying for, even though the prompt is like, tell us about you. The professors want something very different than even a fellowship application. So Dan Frame asks, what's your opinion or experience with the importance of academic or professional references when applying? I had only been an undergrad, so I had people I had worked for as a research assistant, but that was kind of more as experience for me. I actually had letters from people I had worked under. I guess that's like a middle ground. You need three good references. I made sure that all of my writers were going to talk about my potential as a researcher and as a student. You can do this by sending your, uh, your letter writers a quick CV or a quick resume and say, these are the things that I'm gonna be talking about in my application, can you highlight them? As a letter writer, it is so appreciated. Some applications will allow you to put up to five. My recommendation is to try to get professors to write this because that's whose opinion matters. Yeah, I totally agree with that. If you have someone who is going to speak to a totally different part of your character, uh, then, then maybe have an extra person. But otherwise, really tailor it to what they want to be reading. From Stina, we have, what if you don't have that many internships or jobs in science to show? Because you had a lot, uh, you had to work a lot to financiate your studies. Especially talking about like inclusion in STEM professions that... A lot of the time people used to say like, oh, don't put on your lifeguarding job or your job in the dining hall. Like 
my understanding is that now a lot of people are saying, well, actually, if you manage to work and do well in school and find that you're really interested in science and research, like that's great. And so a lot of PIs will kind of reward you for having done hard work, even if it's not specifically science related. And you can say like, I worked this job in the dining hall and it taught me this. Um, this is how I have applied it to my studies or something like that. You can kind of spin it, if you will, in a way that works. But it's not a bad thing to have worked jobs outside of science. You know how to balance real life with school and with other things. This might not be the most popular opinion, but I really think it's true that if you have no research experience at all, you should take time before you go to graduate school. If the reason you're worried about your application is that you have no experience in what you're applying for, it is worth your time to go out and find out if you like it. And if you're on, if you're on the fence about a program you're applying to, look into their policies. Um, find out how many years they guarantee funding for. Find out what they do if your professor leaves. Someone asked how long your undergrad took and um, the fact that people outside of Germany go straight to a PhD after undergrad is kind of odd to her. This is from Stina. Because in Germany, you basically need a master's degree. We have a really U.S.-focused view. We both went to undergrad in the U.S. and now we're in grad school in the U.S. So my undergrad took me four years and my PhD program is going to take me five-ish. PhD programs in Europe and Australia and New Zealand are usually more like three years. Mm -hmm. So it would be kind of odd to be there for five full years. I think our points are really important of talk to people and organize, you know, set your priorities and also understand that it's not you. Like, I love that point because every year, now that I'm in a department, I get to see some of the background workings of it. Sometimes the microbiology department takes 11 people. Sometimes they take five. Um, so a person who is the sixth on their list in one year would totally get in, no problem. The second year wouldn't be there. I think my, my recommendation in general is that if you're not sure if you want to apply to grad school, take a little bit of time. There's always going to be next year. And you don't have to see this time off. It's just time doing other stuff. And if you write in your application, I took off these two years because I wanted to get this experience they're going to love you. To be honest, when things have gotten really rough in grad school, my my just general love of science is what keeps me going, is that as bad as it gets, I can still go in and learn something new. And I love that. Fresh data day today. Like I got two different pieces of good news and then I got awesome data. I was like, okay, yeah, this is why I do it. Like This is why the long days become worth it. And that feeling of like, I have I now know something that no one has ever known before. It's like, that's pretty cool. Yes. It reminds me, we should totally do a show about the perks of grad school. Uh, I think, you know, we do one about the perks, one about the downsides. Uh, again, anyone watching, please let us know in the comments or on Instagram. Our links are down below. What you want us to talk about in the future. If you are a grad student or anyone and you disagree with our advice I would love to hear that too because it's always better to have more voices than to for you to just be like I don't know what they're talking about bye I would way rather hear from you and we can talk about um why we disagree I think that's always really fun if you don't know any grad students or you don't feel like you can reach out to any there are two here who you can talk to and we'll try to point you in the right direction if we can you can um find us on twitter probably find us anywhere pretty easy to find both of our names are, are pretty easy to find Susanna l harris gabby serrato marks our information will be in the links down below and that's a good reminder that if you like this stuff if you have anything else you want us to talk about especially about grad school or even science put a comment and the, the stuff down below. Please come back next week. We will be here on the Nexus channel with the Psy community. Again, my name is Susanna Harris. I'm Gabby Strato-Marks. Bye.